All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be checking out Vala, also known as Vicious Attack Llama Apocalypse, the game where we have to jump inside of a fighting mech, which you can kind of see going on in the background, and kill hordes of starving, man-eating llamas before they can take over the world and... I don't know, do llama things? I'm gonna assume llama things are about to happen here. And essentially this is an arcade game, an arcade shoot 'em up where we have to fend off hordes of llamas in a top-down mech sort of situation. So we're just gonna jump in here and see what it's all about. Is there a video? Can I play the video again? I'm glad you could join us at the Llamazon Corporation. Thanks for signing up to save humanity. I'm Melissa, your eyes in the sky, and I'll be here with you every step of the way. You're on board the state-of-the-art LVS-50, a warship and mobile arsenal. We're currently docked just offshore of Santa Llama City. We don't have much time to get you up to speed, so listen closely. A rogue group of ex Lamazon employees have joined together and are calling themselves the Lamanati. At 3000 hours, they hacked into the television broadcasts nationwide and sent the following message. Hi, I'm Peter. I am. I mean, you don't know who I am. We are the Lamanati. Lamazon has brought this on themselves. For years, their delivery company relied on llamas. I was their default driver, but then out of greed, they replaced me with my sequel. We snuck in through the back door of Lamazon headquarters, and followed a file path that led us to discover that they have replaced us with drones, and were using said drones to deliver weapons. Now we are left to starve and die. We are running so low on corn feed for the llamas, that my Facebook status is, Colonel Panic. As you can see, I am not standing for this. We have taken matters into our own hands. We have formed an alliance with the Llamas and will destroy everything in our path. Llamazon, we are coming for you. We are the Lamanati. We are Camelid. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Damn it. I told you we needed to cut holes in the eyes. So basically, there's a lot of humor in this game, if you haven't really picked up on that yet. And quite a few references to both, like, memes, internet culture, and sort of a play on words for what's going on in the world. Unfortunately, the llamas trumped us by using the sewer and subway systems to get under the walls. The situation is spiraling out of control, and the military are rapidly losing ground. So, yep, you guessed it. You're our only hope. But don't worry, we won't be sending precious little you into battle. It could complicate our insurance policy. Alright, anyway, so you can see a lot of humor, a lot of topical references to what's going on right now, both in politics and the world. But in reality, what's happening is we have to fight the Lamanati, the Llama Illuminati, and everything in this game is some sort of pun or riff or really basic play on words of llamas. So we're gonna go to Santa Lamica City and blast some llamas in the starting level. So I'm gonna play as the blue mech cause that fits my chupacabra personality. And this lovely drone over here is going to drop our mech into the city. Okay, so here we are inside of the game. And at our disposal is a lovely crab walker mech. It's got two arms that each shoot an independent weapon that you can swap out at will. It's got a shield. It's got the ability to dash around and do an overhead slam, which will crush and obliterate any llamas underneath of us. And this is the tool that we are going to be using to stem the tide of the llama apocalypse. And really, Aside from being like an arcade top-down shooter like I was mentioning before, this game is also really a horde shooter, because what you're going to be asked to do is go around in procedurally randomly generated levels and blast away at massive numbers of llamas 
and trying to survive with as much health left as possible. Because the primary thing that's going to destroy you in this game isn't necessarily just a wave or two of llamas that are kind of bitey, but actually attrition as you have to go through quite a few of these different zones with a boatload of llamas in order to reach the end of the mission. And so far, I haven't gotten particularly far before I start to get overwhelmed and lose a whole heck of a lot of health. Now, hopefully, if the video game randomly generated gods are good, we will get some pretty good weapons that will make my life particularly easy. Like whatever this thing is up here. So there's something here for a weapon that has wings. Let me just go ahead and grab that. Or maybe not. And it's hopefully going to provide us with a means of destroying these llamas without losing too, too much additional health. Oh, and we got some Hellfire missiles. Oh, hell yes. So yeah, we've got also some missiles that we can launch that go up into the air, track where your pointer is, and home in an unsuspecting llama fodder. Oh, it's going to be just so scrumptious. I'm actually going to equip both of these. So what is this wings thing? It looks like that wings thing is actually like an 8-bit explosion that I unlocked that just goes up like an arcade game's blaster fire and then explodes in pixelated artwork. Okay, that's kind of neat. I can definitely dig that. So we've already gotten a couple of good weapons, which will make things really nice. And now we've got a couple of options. We can pick from one of two directions to proceed on to the next area. I think we'll go down here, so this checkpoint will scan us and then lock us off. And we are stuck in here again until all of the evil llamas are dead. And the game is also reminding me that I have an ongoing mission available, or like mini objective, to blast away and kill 10 llamas using my dash ability, which is a lot hard, easier said than done, because the dash is kind of weird to control in this game. And honestly, if I was going to use my energy, and that's what those abilities use, is that energy bar up there. If I was going to use the randomly dropped energy from all of these obnoxious little llamas, it would probably be to do an overhead smash, because it's the best way to deal with overwhelming hordes of llama flesh. Like, for real. It's overhead smashes and destroys everything underneath of your mech, and if you aim it correctly into the right part of a massive overwhelming force of llama, it'll pretty much explode and kill all of them, which is great. I'm also discovering that the less you go wa wandering around and explore, generally the safer you are, unless those weird little screamy llamas are around, in which case those guys, I think their objective is to alert other llamas that I am here and cause the horde to zo to hone in on me. Because the whole idea is this is like the aggressive form of uh, employee standoff or former employee standoff where Llamazon, or this universe's version of the Amazon company, used to employ these llamas to deliver everything, and now they use robots. And all these llamas are out of a job and starving to death, undergoing, unquote, a kernel panic, like they were mentioning before. And they're, they're hungry for both justice and probably literal flesh. Tricks on them, though, there's not actually people inside of this mech, it's just a robot. They're just fighting more robot, ha ha. Okay, maybe I can- oh, there's some. There's- just need a couple more. Alright, that's- there we go, I got an achievement. What did that give me? It unlocked additional firing. Maybe firing rate? I'm not really sure. Some of the unlockables in this game are a little bit of a mystery to me. So this is a cluster bomb, and I like the looks of that. I'm all about using the maximum amount of AoE in this game, because that makes my job just so much easier. Couple that with dodging out of the way. Maybe this dash isn't so bad. Because I'm actually starting to set off a few cars, and the cars are way more dangerous to me than any amount of llama ever could be. 
And that's probably the other thing that is the biggest danger to you in this game is the sheer amount of llama related homicide, yes, but also environmental stuff and accidentally blowing yourself up on a bunch of cars. Because I've already just done a whole bunch of damage to myself there. And that was not so good. But I also wandered around a little too much, and now I've pissed off the entirety of the locals. And I'm starting to spark, and we are only like on the second or third zone. So not doing too hot, but we'll just have to play this as far as I can get and just talk about what's going on for the gameplay. So I would say... The only thing I don't like is very early on until you get the ideal number of weapons or the ideal weapon combination, it's really hard to find the playstyle that you really like. But that's gonna happen in any game that ramps up slowly because they want you to kind of get lured further and further into the game with better unlockables, better enemies, more challenging enemies, and different types of environments. So that's just kind of the name of the game, really. So initially, I'm gonna start by blasting away at some of these cars so that I don't accidentally AoE myself to death. And we're gonna slowly entice the llamas to come to their doom. Slowly. Llamas? Oh, there, there's the llamas. I was wondering if I was about to stumble into a boss llama area. Which is entirely possible. These llamas mean business. And they are mean business, these llamas. There's really not very much nice about llamas to begin with. Llamas and alpacas, they spit at you, they're, they bite at you, they're mean, and actually the one thing that's nice about them as a pet is llama and alpaca will actually poop in a, in a pile out in the pasture that they're in and make the cleanup at a minimum. My neighbor had llamas before she moved away due to health reasons. And the thing that she'd, she'd have me come over and help her with all of her stuff by simply getting her bobcat or her skid steer, however you like to call those particular pieces of machinery. And I would just scoop them up with the bucket and put it all into a dumpster for her. And cleaning up like a year's worth of poop probably took about maybe 15 minutes, depending on how far away the poop piles were. And it was pretty easy, actually. I was actually impressed with how low maintenance they were. So it looks like my current objective is to s do some ground smashing and kill a certain number of the llama. What did that unlock for me? I unlocked discounted dash. So yeah, it's kind of reminding me a lot of playing the Binding of Isaac, or at least later versions of the Binding of Isaac, where not all upgrades and bosses were unlocked at the start of the game. You have to go through multiple ver versions of runs in the game in order to unlock not just the whole of the game, but also different weapons and usable items. So you're really just biding your time, doing enough runs until you've got enough stuff unlocked that you can feel properly outrageous and powerful. And I, I can't really verify this, but it's possible that later in the game, you also get the ability to unlock better starting weaponry other than those kind of lameish pistols. Because I'll be honest, I didn't, wasn't really in love with those pistols that you got. I feel like if you're gonna have like a, a million dollar piece of equipment, like this mech, they're gonna be running around in, you'd feel like they'd start you out with like a Gatling gun or something, and that weapon would be a little bit more common than it is right now. But say la vie, say la vu. I'm really just biding my time in this game until all the llamas are dead, so that after I'm done being a mech pilot and I get a, a promotion at work, I can, you know, pitch to Llama Bezos, the CEO of Llamazon, the idea of a sort of like llama jelly, like an artisanal llama jam that we can sell with all of this ridiculous amount of llama goo that I'm generating here as I'm on the job. And that would make things interesting for customers, I'd say. Oh, there we go, there's, an a there's a, a crowd controlling tool, which is kind of handy. That is the water cannon. I don't really like it so much, simply because... I don't know, it just kind of knocks things back a little bit, and it's got a long cooldown. But I would just as soon kill the llamas. But my strategy for different things might change going forward, as we find newer and more dangerous enemies, because the worst thing I have to deal with right now has been the little screamy llamas. 
And those guys, again, I'm pretty sure, are there to attract more llamas to come and kill me. And I would just assume they didn't do that, but, you know. C'est la vie, c'est la vue. Yeah, I'm gonna say the exploding cars are probably my biggest threat, and not having enough AoE at the start of the game to make it easy not to get cornered. But, you know, whatever. Oh, now my objective is to knock over street lamps. So that's actually kind of cool. They actually offer you different things that aren't necessarily forcibly gameplay related to do as little fun things. So what is this? Oh yes, that's a machine gun. Oh yes. See, this is what I'm talking about. This deadly rapid fire machine gun. I would have expected to actually have this equipped at the start of this mission. But well, that's fine. I unlocked it so it gave me a place to go and to expand in the game. So I'm definitely on board with all of that shenanigans. Now my hope is that I don't uh, run out of health before I run out of things to say. Which, I don't know. Trying to do a fast-paced, arcade style game where you kill hordes and hordes of llamas while trying to make meaningful commentary is easier said than done, frankly, but you know. You gotta practice and learn how to do it somehow, and doing it live is, you know, not the worst way to go about it. Especially if you're as lovably, adorably murdery like Larry! And I'm a chupacabra, and you guys are practically like sheep, which means you're gonna get eaten. Oh, okay. Well, that's where we end off this little run. So, how did we do? I haven't actually seen the end score screen in, screen in a while. So it looks like we've taken a lot of damage. We cost to taxpayers 500 grand in damages to the locals, which is fine. I'm sure they'd rather be alive than, you know, eaten by llamas if I do blow up a couple cars in the process. Who cares? It is a multiplayer game. I suppose I should mention that as well. And it looks like we killed two primary kinds of llamas, and there are about four other general purpose llama. This one's got some scary antlers. Okay, not bad. I kind of like this game. It gives you a lot of places to go, and it's got couch co-op so that if you want to play with your friends, you certainly can. It's got a nice little humor to it. I'd say what's not to love. Let's see, in my profile, it can show me the different things that I've unlocked, which there are quite a few. It'll show me my job perks, which are more stuff that I've unlocked. Okay, so whenever I reload my weapons, I can equip this to send out a ring of fire. And I've also got a bunch of achievements built into the game, which you cannot see right now. To let me show off to all of my friends to see all the llamas I've killed. At present, I've killed about 2,882 of them. Not including all of the holographic llamas I kicked with my mech in the simulation. So I'd say, so far, I like how it ramps up, and I like the arcadey top-down horde shooter feel to it. I like the humor. I'd say this is well worth the $15 price tag, and this game is out into full release right now. So yeah, that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed a little preview at Vicious Attack Llama Apocalypse, also known as Vala. I've been your host, Larry. Check it out for yourselves, and until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe, and toodaloo.